Hey guys. Um, wow, this is a really challenging course. You can see the finish line as they're coming through the finishing chute. Just want to give you guys some insight of exactly what happened when I talked to most of the teams and some of the general class guys. They're worried. Um, it, as I heard Todd say, this is a violent effort. It truly is. So did you guys have to change some gearing? Yeah. Yes, some of them changed their gearing for the downhill. Did you have to change your warm-up approach? Yes, we had to change our warm-up approach. It's such a short race, there's so much vertical, that every guy that I talked to, whether they were a sprinter, GC contender, or somebody in between, they had to give their all today. <laughs> good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, got some pretty good intel. I love the conversation you guys were having just before I brought in. Talked to the teams in the compound today, and quite frankly, I must have, out of all the teams that I talked to, everyone had a different opinion on how this is going to finish. Some said shatter, some said together, some said 30, some said 20 riders to the finish line. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I did talk to uh, Heath Blackgrove of Elevate. He told me that he would be comfortable with four minutes. I just talked to Danny Van Hout of Wildlife Foundation. He said they would only give us a 145, so it seems to be waffling between those two. One last thing, Prado's looked for water for the past 25 minutes. One of the guys in the breakaway has not been able to get any. Wow. Now there's uh, something to look for for your for your team support. All right, Chad, thank you very much. Proud of the guy off the back of that. Hey, guys, uh, an interesting couple of interesting developments that I've noticed. First of all, when I was talking to Danny Van Hout earlier today, he was like he was super content having two riders. Well, had two riders in the breakaway. He said, we're going after the KO imports. It's plain and simple. Then I was getting ready to go to the Neri Satoli car, ask him about their intentions, because Bongiorno hasn't had any points in anything. It just as I was about ready to go back there and ask him what their plan was, since their rider kind of was stuck out nowhere in the breakaway, the car disappeared. So that kind of told me everything I needed to know. Then one final thing, Todd, you said that you rode the climb. The climb now has become a little bit harder because the roads here in Utah are full of black tar and the tar makes the course really heavy and it has these little nasty things we call tar snakes so they're not in a difficult climbing up but the tar has a tendency to grab your wheels climbing then on the descents oh boy we had a couple little fish tails that made me grab onto Stewie a little bit harder so yeah that's all we've got right now back to you guys all right thanks very much for the inside happy hump day to you guys we got some Good information for you. First of all, where we are positioned right in front of the peloton, the breakaways up the road a little bit. I've noticed that uh, EF Education, Education First, excuse me, has sent a couple of riders along with Elevate. And I'm gonna flash back uh, just a little bit ago. The speeds, when we started the stage, were approaching 60 miles, 60 kilometers an hour. I mean, it was an absolute free-for-all for the first hour. Then the break got established. Wildlife Foundation, I felt really bad for them. I talked to Danny Van Hout, and he was saying that they're all in for the King of the Mountain jersey for Boardman. Well, guess what? He had a flat, went backwards, the break got established. So they totally missed that opportunity there. And then a couple other things, the gearing today. And of course, we'll probably be talking about that a little bit more. Every team that I talk to, all their climbers have 34, 32s. But get this. Rally, let the riders pick their gear ratio. Rob Britton went with a 39-32. And wow. that, means a heck, that means a heck of a lot to a guy. Todd Gogolski's jaw yeah. dropped. Go inside the tour again with Chad Andrews on the moto. Chad, as hot as it looks? Yeah, guys, you would be very surprised. I mean, usually when we get up around this altitude, it starts cooling off pretty rapidly. My uh, Kestrel wind gauge and thermometer is reading 94 degrees with low humidity, so the salt is just building up on every one of the jerseys. It's the rider that can tolerate the heat and the altitude is going to be the guy that's going to win today's stage. Back to you. All right, thanks very much. Well, we talked in Inside the Tour with Chad Andrews. Chad. Yeah, gentlemen, I've got a very good perspective. I've got the lead five riders right in front of me. Joe Dombrowski looked like he was suffering there for a while, but he's actually got his legs back. He's close to within about 30, 35 meters. And when I tell you what, this is one look that I won't forget. It makes me think back to many years ago at the Tour de France, the look. When Piccoli was rounding the turn, he gave me this look like, this race is mine. Back to you. Well, right now, he's going to have to make a move with Chad Andrews. Chad. 
at the update, you guys. I've got some good information for you. First of all, where we are positioned right in front of the Peloton, the breakaway's up the road a little bit. I've noticed that uh, EF Education, Education First, excuse me, has sent a couple of riders along with Elevate. And I'm gonna flash back uh, just a little bit ago. The speeds, when we started the stage, were approaching 60 miles, 60 kilometers an hour. I mean, it was an absolute free-for-all for the first hour. Then the break got established. Wildlife Foundation, I felt really bad for them. I talked to Danny Van Hout, and he was saying that they're all in for the King of the Mountain jersey for Boardman. Well, guess what? He had a flat, went backwards, the break got established. So they totally missed that opportunity there. And then a couple other things, the gearing today. And of course, we'll probably be talking about that a little bit more. Every team that I talk to, all their climbers have 34, 32s. But get this. Rally let the riders pick their gear ratio. Rob Britton went with a 39-32. And wow. that means That's a heck that means a heck of a lot to a guy. Todd Gogolski's jaw yeah. dropped side the tour again with Chad Andrews on the moto. Chad, as hot as it looks. Yeah, guys, you would be very surprised. I mean, usually when we get up around this altitude, it starts cooling off pretty rapidly. My uh, Kestrel wind gauge and thermometer is reading 94 degrees with low humidity, so the salt is just building up on every one of the jerseys. It's the rider that can tolerate the heat and the altitude is going to be the guy that's going to win today's stage. Back to you. All right, thanks very much. Well, we talked about the difference between shade temperature and... Yeah, gentlemen, I've got a very good perspective. I've got the lead five riders right in front of me. Joe Dombrowski looked like he was suffering there for a while, but he's actually got his legs back. He's close to within about 30, 35 meters. And when I tell you what, this is one look that I won't forget. It makes me think back to many years ago at the Tour de France, the look. When Piccoli was rounding the turn, he gave me this look like, this race is mine. Back to you. <laughs> well, right now with Chad Andrews. Chad. I was asking about Travis McCabe and I said, how can Travis win the stage? Well, he said he's got to get in a break, but unfortunately the white jersey was following him everywhere. Well, Travis is in, in the move. Then I talked to Education First about Alex Howes. And quite frankly, typical from those guys, they were non-committal, uncommittal. So I was like, well, what about Alex's chances for today? Being that he's very similar to Travis McCabe, he said, not today. Well, Alex is in the move too. I did talk to Israeli Cycling Academy, and they feel that this sets up absolutely perfectly for them. They've managed the race very well. They've turned it over to elevate a little bit. They think either A, they can keep the jersey, or B, get the stage win. Huh. Well, there's so a lot there of you go, Andrews, to let us know what's happening right now. Chad? Well, guys, um, if it's any indication to you what this circuit is like, I've been trying to go live with you, but it's been virtually impossible. We're either jettisoning down the descent, making left and right-hand turns fast, and then we're...